What we got here, Jade? We're about to cook some nopales. All so right. first, you take your knife. You make sure that you put your fingers in an area where not, you're not going to get the spinas, which are actually the, uh, the prickly parts, and you cut it at the joint. So what nice. we're going to do is we're actually going to shave it. We're going to cut the meat, and then we're going to boil it a little bit, because when you don't, it tastes kind of bitter. But it's really good when it's So what are you about to make? Uh, we're going to make papas y nopales. Oh, dang. It's going and down. In Mexican food, there's really not too, there's not too many traditional plates that we make. We just use the same spices for everything. <laughs> Almost everything. What's going on here? Uh, just showing people what a, what a Friday night's like at the Free Thinker House. Friday night. Fresh veggies. Fresh veg. Fusion food. Cactus. Cats. And a house full of weirdos. <laughs> yeah. We got Danny Quest in the building, visiting from out of town, keeping it real. So what do you do right now, Jay? So what I'm doing is I'm preparing onions for the potatoes, but I'm soaking the cactus because when you soak them, it kind of takes all of the slimy stuff off of it, and then you boil it a little bit. That way, you can fry it later. And it tastes pretty good. Sweet. <laughs> so it's soaking right there. Jeffers cooking potatoes. Fusion Fridays. Fusion Fridays, we got some Chinese pasta. Fusion. Day after for the community. Day after for the community. Day after for the community. You guys are all gonna be our next update about the house. Thank you for being here. Got Kenny in the kitchen. Cooking up some conscious creations. Three tents in the yard. Hey, what's up, everyone? This is Sunday, November 13th, the day after For the Community 12. And we still have house guests here camping out in the garden. And we have people hanging out at the house. Lots of exciting things coming up. We are finally getting our kombucha going. We have bottles in now. Um, we're going to be putting labels. And I think we're going to try our first kombucha brand outside of just the regular vinegary taste. We're going to try to do some prickly pear stuff. So we've got these already growing in the garden, these cactus that we've showed you. And we've been trying to think of what to do with them. So we're going to pick them today. And we don't have a blender, so you got to freeze them, clean them up, let them freeze for about 24 hours, then take them out and squeeze all the juice out of them. We'll put that in the kombucha, let it sit and ferment, and we'll have prickly pear kombucha you know, pretty soon. So let's check this out. These are uh, this is the first time that we're picking any of them. I just looked up online. I'm using gloves because they do have these tiny little spines. They're really hard to see, but they will still get you. And most of these feel good. We're going to just bring them all in, and uh, we'll see which ones are soft or a little bit hard. Like that one, probably not quite yet. And we're in Houston, which is like a weird tro tropical climate, so we can grow everything from palm trees to cactus. Uh, we can grow jalapenos in the winter, all kinds of stuff. So we're gonna pick these and we'll take them inside and clean them off and then freeze them. They don't look like there's anything on them, but they'll still get you. I uh, see I got a few in me already. Put the gloves back on. <laughs> just gonna wash them off and uh, we just looked online. It said uh, if you have a blender, you can blend them up and then just put them right into your jams, jellies, we're gonna do kombucha, you can do all kinds of things. I even saw it said barbecue sauce, prickly pear barbecue sauce. All right, we're gonna try to juice these. These are prickly pears. I think we got most of the spines on, but it said that you could still do it with the spines, so. I don't know, how, how can I shove that in there without getting my hand wrangled? Uh, yeah, you can use like a wooden spoon or something. Yeah, a wooden spoon. So we're gonna put these prickly pears in there, we're gonna blend the juice, put it in here, and then we're gonna make kombucha with that. And this is showing you guys, we have this cactus available here at the house, so we're making use of what's already here. And brewing our own kombucha, and then this is going to turn into income in the counter economy, because we won't be paying taxes on any of this. We won't be asking for licenses to make our own kombucha. And uh, we can redirect that money back into our community, back into the house, and back into the garden, without the state touching any of it. Solutions. No juice coming so far. Alright. Mm. Oh, we got a little bit. Check out, check this out over here. Check out this, this 
side. And then you can pause the guy for it. Alright, so we'll put more of these in there. Pear juice. That's all. All right. So what are we doing here? Starting fresh sprouts. Batch number three. Worked out the kinks. We're not going to have dirt on the sunflower sprouts anymore. On the sunflower microgreens anymore. Is that like what we have here? Yeah. You said this is like how many pounds? Three pounds. That was three pounds. Together. So we got three pounds here. We're going to try to sell to some local restaurants. Starting a fresh batch now. What's the difference? Like, how do you keep the dirt from getting in there? Like, like in these ones. Well, you don't cover them with dirt. That's why I, I cover them with a thin layer of dirt. Last thing, because I saw some video doing it, and they just get mud all over their leaves. Yeah, which you could clean off, but it's just uh, easier. I saw another way to do it. You just instead of putting soil on it, you just put a tray on it. So you put the seeds. Put the seeds directly on the soil, and then you just put a tray just right on, top on of it. it for three days, and then when they start growing, they just grow without anything to break through any soil. Cool. Right. So, I mean, you think that how many you think we'll be able to produce in a week now that we've got this time? If it's every three day, you know, if it's, if they're growing in about a week or so, right? Like, these ones will probably a you week know and a half, two weeks. I don't have the answer to that yet. We haven't started selling to restaurants, and I don't know how much how many demand they have, but. Whatever they demand, we have the supply, so. So we'll try to meet the and demand. We have, we have 50 trays right now, so yeah. Just another project we're working on here. 